Hello, I am your kingdom, spiritual transformational and life purpose life coach and mentor Latricia Booker here with Kingdom Business. But well, we are empowered. When we heal, we get delivered and we get free. We know who we are. We elevate our minds and our spirits and raise and expand our consciousness to ultimately walk in our true divine purpose and power. And that is the truth of who God has created us to be. Kingdom people, we are, we are, we are. We are history makers. We are world changers. We are dream successors. We are wealth generators. We are manifestors. We are curse breakers. And we most definitely are transformers more than meets the eye. Yeah, kingdom people, we are, we are, we are. Kingdom people, thank you all so very much for viewing my videos. Thank you for all the likes, subscribe, shares, your comments and feedback. Thank you for all your financial contributions to my channel. Thank you for all the seeds that you sow into me and my ministry. Thank you for all of your bookings, for all the sessions. Thank you for allowing me to serve you, kingdom people. I really do appreciate you all. And that is from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, kingdom people. Thank you. And so, kingdom people, y'all already know what I'm here to do. And if you don't know, then now you know. I am here to drop this beat, this word, this message. Yeah. So, kingdom people, I am the chain breaker. And you two are chain breakers, kingdom people. Are y'all ready to break these chains? Let's go. So listen up, kingdom people. The name of this video, the name, the title of this message is They Have Damaged Souls. They Have Damaged Souls. And so this is by viewer request, by sus subscriber's request. Um, a subscriber asked me to do a video talking about damaged souls. What do I mean by damaged souls? And so I find that when one request is made, many people need to hear the same message. Y'all know how the saying go in class, in classes, when um, some other people might have that same question. And even if they don't have the question or are not asking to hear about it, the information is still valuable. It's still very necessary. And this is exactly what God told me concerning this message. So shout out, shout out to you, the viewer. I don't want to say your name. I didn't get your permission for all of that. Um, but shout out to you for asking for this message. Because God himself said it's needed. So, they have damaged souls. And now here's the thing, kingdom people. People who operate in their sinful nature, I'll say it that way, or in evil and wicked ways, they have damaged souls. This is what God has revealed to me. I mean, it, it's not hard to know and see but when it's revealed to you and God speaks this to you specifically, directly, um, it takes on a whole new life, so to speak, or understanding. It, a life, I keep hearing, it's like it's a new revelation or you see things in a different way. So, um, these ones have damaged souls. Them ones have damaged souls. Who am I speaking of? Okay, so here's the thing, kingdom people. Because we live in this world, in a fallen world that is, there's been so much calamity, destruction. Um, wow, so many horrific events that have taken place in this world. And the thing is, kingdom of people, we experience these events or some events or we have life experiences that can be very traumatic for us as individuals. Anyone, any culture, any race can and will experience some amount of trauma. Now, sometimes people are in much better situations where they don't experience as much trauma as others. However, in their lifetime, specifically in their earlier part of their life, I'll say mid, mid. I don't even know what I mean by that. But let's just say up until they're at least young or to mid-adult life, 
they will experience we all will experience some form of trauma some form even if it doesn't come from our our parents or those who raised us because many of us have experienced trauma by those who we were raised who were re, who, who we were raised by not everyone not everyone but it's very common or we may experience some form of trauma in within the family, in a family dynamic, or just with a family's friend, or in the neighborhood. I mean, most of us experience some form of trauma in our life. And therefore, because we experience some form of trauma, it can be damaging to our, we're going to say, our soul. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Depending on the magnitude of the trauma you experience determines how you, the extent to which you must heal, do the healing that's necessary to recover. Now, any form of trauma, no matter how small, no matter how big, but we're going to say no matter how small, will need some form of healing. It needs some form of acknowledgement and some kind of a, a, a healing process to fully recover from that which you were you know whatever traumatized you or whatever caused the damage to your soul i'm reminded of donald lawrence he has a song out called deliver us deliver me deliver me um leandra johnson she actually solos the the song and so i think i'm saying it right she leads the lead singing in that song and so it's a part in the beginning where Donald Lawrence says, you know, what you've been through in your life has left a hole in your soul. And he makes the point to say, it's not that your spirit is not right, but it's just that your soul has, your soul has a hole. There's a hole that's being left to your soul. So now just going off of that, any kind of trauma that we experience does leave a hole in our soul. It can. It can. And again, depending on the magnitude of the trauma, we can have holes in our souls the thing is that we have to heal and that's kind of like what that song speaks on deliver me deliver me deliver me because there's something going on in me because of the trauma or whatever i experience and most times it is trauma i mean anything that's outside of god and his love and care for you is trauma it comes in many forms it has many names but they're all forms of trauma now again most most people humanity has experienced some form of trauma is you can't find anyone in this world that has had no trauma N none at all you can't now again there are degrees to this there's level to this trauma okay here's the thing king of people either you heal your soul or you don't and when you don't, you be, you're a damaged soul. Now manage. I'm sorry. <laughs> now mind. I said now manage. <laughs> you need to manage your soul, king of people. You really do. You really do. <laughs> I wasn't trying to say that, but it's interesting because you do need to manage your soul. Wow, that's a whole nother word right there. But listen, king of people, the thing is this. When your soul has been damaged, you need to do some healing. That's what brings your soul to a better place. That's what he, healing heals you. So whatever your trauma was, you need to do something about it to get healed from it. So you can heal from it. So it won't be damaging to your soul. So think about it, kingdom people. If you don't heal, if you don't heal, from whatever trauma you experience, whatever happened to you in your life that caused this damage to your soul, what happens? Your damage will still be will still be. I'm sorry, your soul will still be damaged. I'm trying to switch it around. I'm trying to see what I was seeing. Your damage will still still be sold. Hmm. Interesting. But your soul will still be damaged if you don't heal. What happens, kingdom people, is if you don't heal your soul, your damaged soul, it gets more and more damaged. Now, if you are a person, not you, kingdom people, but let's just say them ones. Them ones, instead of healing, they project. 
and they attempt to do damage and harm to others. They attempt to damage others' souls, kingdom people. Whether it be trying to block, stop hating on them, trying to get whatever. That's an attempt to try to cause harm. And that is attempt, an attempt to try to cause harm and damage to your soul. Now, let me say this. Whether it, 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 it helps or not, or whether they succeed at it or not, my point here is this. When you're someone who is trying to inflict that on someone else, that's, for one, an indication that you have, your soul is damaged, you haven't healed, and what's happening is that when you're trying to inflict that on someone else and cause others harm, you're damaging your soul more. The more of what you put out is the more of what you're going to get back. So not only are, is, a, is a damaged soul who's trying to perpetuate harm on others already a damaged soul, they're becoming more and more damaged because they're trying to hurt and harm others. You only bring that damnation, that damage on right upon yourself. You're not, in other words, they're not healing. They're not getting better. They're getting worse. Now, let me scoot over a minute and walk these scriptures real fast. Just, just stay with me, kingdom people. I'm, I'm going somewhere here with this. James 5 and 20 says, let him know that whoever brings lack a sinner wait a minute let me start that over not lack back james 5 and 20 says let him know whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins so king of people here that's an indication that when a wanderer is brought back when a wanderer has brought back a sinner has been brought back that their soul has been saved from death it says it's funny it says let him know let him know that whoever brings I'm getting a whole nother message here how the person people who are, who contribute to bringing the soul back the wandering soul the sinner the sinning soul whoever brings that soul back brings it back around to god that he is it's saying here that it saves his soul from death and it will cover a multitude of sins now the point here that i'm making is that you have to be brought away from what it is that you're doing, your sin, you're wandering off away from God in order for, for your soul to be saved. Now it says here that your soul is saved from death. So if your soul is saved from death, your soul is saved from being further damaged. You are already a damaged soul if you were just out here wandering and sinning. I'm just speaking in general terms just to make the point of the damaged soul. So what am I seeing here, kingdom people? If you're constantly sinning, constantly sinning, constantly sinning, constantly living out of your sinful nature, and on top of that, let's just say God tell you to turn around. Come on, let's go over here and do this now. And you don't. You're causing further damage on your soul. Either way, you're damaging your soul. An already damaged soul further gets damaged. But if you turn away, and you're brought back away, back brought back to God, away from your sinning, you save your soul from death. Or in this case, in this scripture, speaking of the person or whoever helps bring the person back around, helps save that person's soul from death. The point is, kingdom people, your soul is damaged because you're sinning, which leads to death. Let me confirm that. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So here it's saying the wages of sin is death. So sin brings on death. That already means your soul is damaged. And if you don't come out of that sin, <laughs> you know, if you don't come out of it, that's what you're going to get. Death. Death, which is damage. That's damage to your soul. 
And then it says the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you turn away from that sin, if you turn away from the wicked ways, if you turn away from the things that God is not pleased with, then you will receive the gift of God, eternal life with Christ Jesus our Lord. Genesis 2 and 17 says, but from the tree of knowledge, uh, from the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. So here, kingdom people, it's speaking of what you eat from. Where you eat from. You, if This is the point in this scripture. If you do what God says do, you're good. If you do the opposite of what God says do, you bring a death upon yourself. It says here you will surely die. If you eat, if you eat, from that tree that he said don't eat from you will surely die what's happening is that you're, da you're damaging your soul when you're eating where God said don't eat you're damaging your soul it ends in death when you are obedient and you do what God tells you to do it ends in eternal life you're, you, even if it was once damaged you heal your soul so kingdom people Ultimately, what I'm saying here, if you walk in the ways of God and you're healing your soul, you're healing yourself from whatever wounds and traumas that you have experienced, then you're healed. You're becoming free. You're becoming who God designed you to be. Your divine self, your God self, the greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the only way that God can be that greater he in you than he that is in the world is if you allow him to heal you. Heal you from whatever trauma, from whatever it is that you experience living in this falling world that you have experienced. Otherwise, you are a damaged soul. No shade. Because the thing is that you can get free. You can heal your soul. Your soul can be healed. God desires to heal you. That's a lot of the point of him. <laughs> to heal you. To free you. To deliver you. But if you're not getting that deliverance, if you're not being healed, you're not healing, you're not allowing that to happen, then you are a damaged soul. And again, furthermore, if you're trying to put on to somebody else some harm or damage, trying to damage their soul, you only, people like that are already damaged souls, but they only further, they further damage their souls. They're operating out of their sinful nature, which right there, that leads to death. So right there, they're constantly damaging their soul. And so the thing here, kingdom people, is that you can be a damaged soul, but then again, if you're trying to cause someone else harm, you're further damaging your soul. That's what I'm the point I'm trying to make here. But then we have third third John 1 and 2, and it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may as prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So, kingdom people, this is saying, listen, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things. That you would may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. So your soul has to prosper to be in good health. Your soul has to prosper, which means that you have to heal your soul in order for it to prosper. A damaged soul won't prosper. So if your soul is not prospering, if your soul is not healing, recovering, and just to add another element, walking in the ways of God. I probably already said that before, but walking in the ways of God, I'm here walking not in the flesh, but in the spirit. See, kingdom people, when you walk in the flesh, you're walking in death. You're walking in your sinful nature. You are damaging your soul. But when you walk in the spirit, that is the ways of God and how God instructs you, you are walking in the spirit. Therefore, your soul is healing and or healed. And I like to just always be in a, a disposition, have a be already always be in that space of being prepared to heal because in life things just happen. I find myself 
you know, it's like over this past weekend, there was some things that had happened and transpired that caught my attention. I saw one, well, we already know about the road versus road versus way, that whole little situation. And so it did kind of put some on my mind. I heard different commentary about it, you know, heard what different people had to say, which gave me some insight and helped me to see things in a way that I would never thought of it before. Probably wouldn't have if this whole thing hadn't happened. You know, that was one thing where I, it had me in a, a space of healing. It had me in a space of, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it because I felt the hurt of people who are, who are affected by this in different ways for different reasons and also it was another thing that I seen the G I'm gonna say G boy his his initials are SS um I say his first the first part saucy so his initials are SS seeing a clip of this person talking about G's rule the world and even went so far on another thing that I seen some comments here that women get their feminine qualities from G men. And I'm just like, what? I was just, you know, so I'm saying all that to say that these things, God have me see these things because I will do tend to take them and hold them. And just I don't know, I can't even explain it, but it's like a healing thing that takes place. Now, I mention all that too to say I believe because I do heal, have healed, and c consistently leave myself in a healing disposition. I'm hearing, hearing that's because I'm a healer. You know, not trying to, you know, but that's what I'm getting. But because I he can heal me, I, you know, when you're able to heal you and do your own healing work, you can extend your healing abilities out to heal others and even situations, even humanity in those areas or those people affected by certain things in the collective among all people or a certain group of people or whatever. Because I, I would say I've experienced it all because no, I don't think so. Um, but what I identify with or what just, what I gravitate towards or what appeals to me, you know, what I'm seeing is certain groups, certain causes, certain situations. Um, but the point is this, king of people, a damaged soul couldn't do that. A damaged soul is actually damaged more by the adverse effects of what's going on in humanity. So, I don't mean to be all over the place here, but damaged souls are damaged because they never heal, to pretty much sum that up. They've experienced some trauma. They're never, as I already said, most of us have, many of us living in this world, you can't escape it, but you have to heal and recover. All throughout scripture, God talks about that, that the healing and recovery that we need to do. It's not using those words, but we okay. Yes, yeah, yes it is. It's some of those, the words in there too, in the scriptures. Healing and recovery. He talks about restoring, how we have to restore. I'm reminded of Psalms 1, the first chapter, should I say. Anyhow, he restoreth my soul is what I'm speaking of. So, king of people, the thing is, if you're not healing, you're damaged. If you're, if you're damaged and you're perpetuating harm, not only on others, even your, yourself. Well, that's what you're doing. If you're trying to perpetuate a harm on others, you think of thinking of others in a negative way, or you're doing not not based on the truth and what they are, but you know, even if that's what they are, to dwell on that you know, and brewing that to the point you want to cause somebody harm or want someone to be harmed or want bad for someone, that means you're a damaged soul is the point that I'm making. And when you're a damaged soul and you're continuing that, you're further damaging your soul. So, kingdom people, why do I say they have damaged souls? I say they have damaged souls because they continuously, consistently try to damage your soul, <laughs> someone else's soul. That's an indication that they have a damaged soul. Healed souls don't try to damage other souls. Even when, if you were at one point not healed, you were damaged, 
and maybe you still are. You may have some ways about yourself or have had some ways about yourself that were hurtful to others, but that was because you needed to heal your own soul, heal your, heal your own self. Now, if you went on to do that, recognizing you needed to do that, then it comes a point to where you're not operating or you don't have those behaviors that you had before because you have healed your soul. You're healing your soul. So again, it goes back to those who keep repeating, um, repeating the same behaviors, damaging behaviors. I was thinking about this this morning, how this one particular person <laughs> that I speak to is a viewer of the subscriber who mentioned, you know, the things that they experienced with their elders. Well, it actually was a couple of few people, now that I'm thinking about it. But one in particular just came to mind at first. And, you know, I thought about hmm, some personal experiences too, based on what was said. And it occurred to me that they keep repeating the same behaviors. And it's a thing where, okay, if you were in your 20s, your 30s, maybe even your 40s, and you got some little stuff going on, I mean, and that doesn't mean that it ends there. It's, it's like you should see a change. Some should be changing. You should be healing and recovering from that. And it makes me think of why I often look past a lot. Because my thinking is, oh, they'll recover. They'll be okay. They'll heal. They'll do whatever needs to be done. But what happens is they don't. And 20, 30 years in, 40 years in, and not just that, when you see certain people of a certain age operating in a certain demonic behavior, let me say what it is. If they're demonic or they're doing things that is just not of God and it doesn't serve you. I'm here trying to control, dictate, you know, um, spin you. Like I was saying before, gaslighting. You know, all these things are forms of, of or indications, should I say, that you are a damaged soul. You are a damaged soul if you're operating in any of those demonic behaviors. If you're trying to cause harm to anybody to anybody but what i'm literally getting is even again even if you're not trying to cause harm and it's harmful because again those shows that you need to heal those certain behaviors say you need to heal and again if you are of a certain age and you still operating in certain behaviors it means that you have not healed what is that what am i saying that you have a damaged soul that's why I came to people. I'm saying they have damaged souls. Now, Galatians 6 and 8 says, A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. So, again, came to people. People are, if you reap, if you sow from your sinful nature, you're going to reap destruction. If you sow from the spirit, you're going to reap eternal life. Now, here's the thing with this. You're going to sow whatever you, you're going to reap whatever you sow. So if you're sowing damage on somebody else, if you're sowing, you know, saying something crazy or just, you know, all that inappropriate stuff. Like I said, first of all, that means you are unhealed. And furthermore, you're sowing it. And if you're trying to sow that, that's what you're going to reap. So if you're trying to doing something that could be that could be damaging to another soul, then you're damaging your own soul. It has a reverse, adverse reaction. It comes right back to you. That that you sow is that that you will also reap. So kingdom people, what am I saying here? They have damaged souls. They have damaged souls because they continue in this treacherous behavior. Again, even if those who have not, are not, well, you know what, God is telling me this. This was actually on me this morning, too. So if you are a person, let's just use jealousy as an example. If you are a person who's, okay, that's this your girl. Your girl over here, whatever, she got some good things going on, whatever it is, and you're jealous of something about your girl. If you don't get that jealousy, furthermore, deal with that jealous spirit. If you don't nip that jealousy in the, in the bud and go into yourself and, and to God or whatever you got to do to figure out why you feeling that way and kill that thing, 
you're going to start acting out on a friend. There's no way around it. I always say, them ones that come at us kind of people, if they have some jealousy going on in them, if they just jealous and they just jealous and they keep it with themselves, they'll probably be all right. That's what I would like to say. But where they go wrong is when they start coming at you. They go wrong when they start coming at you for many reasons because you watch hoes and you are God's kingdom people, you are God's anointed, and that's just a big no no. But the point right here is to say, when they start, they are you are already damaged because you sitting here, man, and envious and jealous and doing all this crazy stuff. Even if you're doing it secretly, you trying to hide it, don't want it to be known. It doesn't matter. That's still a damage to your soul if you're sitting there with envy and jealousy. I'm hearing and covetousness, greed, okay, lust, perversion. I'm hearing all kind of stuff. <laughs> Fear. If you're sitting there with all that. You are already damaged. Now you can heal. But these ones that we talking about, they go a step further. And instead of healing, they start trying to cause others harm. Particularly those who they're jealous of. Those who, you know what I'm speaking of. Not always, because some of these ones just like to try to keep anybody down. But I don't want to go into all that. Let me stick to the script. <laughs> As if I have one. But can the people. They have damaged souls. Like I said, we all could have had some form of damage to some extent because we live in this world. What we do with it is up to us. When you don't do nothing with it, you're going to start messing with other people. And then that means you have further damaged your soul. Why do these people act the way they act, kingdom people? Because they have damaged souls. What are these people doing, kingdom people, when they continue in this behavior? Kingdom people, they damage their souls. Because they're operating out of their sinful nature. They're not walking in the spirit. And because of that, they're out here doing all kind of evil, trying to cause all kind of harm to other people. And kingdom people, that in itself will continuously damage their soul. Kingdom people, before I go, let me just say this. A soul is the spiritual or immaterial part of a human being or animal regarded as immortal. So our soul is the one having the experience. And it's immortal. That's why they say the soul continues to live on. How can we have everlasting life? Or how can we have end up in hell, our soul burning in hell, unless it's a soul. It's the one experiencing it. Our soul is the one is is the entity that's experienced everything we experience. We just have a body. For that soul to experience what we experience in it. Spirit. Spirit is the non-physical part of a person. Which is the seat of emotions and character. The soul. So here what God gave me concerning this spirit is. Spirit is the it was what you operate in. It says the part of which is the seat of emotions and character. So what's your character? Where are you at emotionally? Many of times you have to do the work on that. You have to work on your emotions and you know become more emotionally to intelligent and and um i like to say independent and free you know those kind of things stable all those things where you are emotionally and then your character but what god showed me concerning this is the spirit that you operate in is what your soul is experiencing so whatever you choose to do, if you take on the spirit of greed, that's what your soul is experiencing, which is going to cause it damage because that's not of God. If you walk in the spirit of love, if you walk in the spirit of gentleness, that's what your soul is going to experience. Now, yeah, you do have to be careful because so you want so none of them ones won't be trying to take advantage of you because you know how they are, which is why they have damaged souls. They further damage their souls by continuing to operate in the spirit of greed, in the spirit of jealousy, in the spirit, I'm hearing theft. Them ones that be trying to take your stuff from you. Okay, king of people, mind. The mind is the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and their experiences to think and to feel. The faculty of consciousness and thought. So, king of people, in a nutshell, what you think is what you become. 
So if you think on good things, you're going to put your attention into good things, do the work of good things, and the results going to be the good things. If you're thinking on some crazy cuckoo, you know, you're going to act on that. That's why even the scriptures say, before you sin, you did it in your mind. If you lusted in your mind, you didn't already lust it before you do it physically because it starts in your mind. You didn't lust it already just in your mind. So what does that mean? That that's a spirit. That's a spirit, but it started in your mind. See, if you think on that, that's what you become. Now here it's saying that the, the element is the mind is the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and their experiences to think and to feel. So I'm, at, I'm speaking of mind just in terms of you have to be careful of what you're doing with your mind. You have to be careful of what you're thinking and how you're thinking. And many of these ones, you know, the ones who have damaged souls, their damage, a lot of it comes from the way they first started thinking because I'm hearing as a man thinking in his heart so is he so it starts with your thinking and it leads into other things in this case into you know those actions and behaviors that causes further damage to their soul because many times if you already had some damage to your soul what again what you do with that because sometimes people get damaged to their soul some happen to have a traumatic experience and they internalize like i'm whoever i'm this bad person i can't do all those things which i don't care to go into right now but you get what i'm saying king of people so right there you're damaging your own soul then their ones tend to go out and start damaging others because they're not healed they're not healed. They are damaged souls. So, Kendra people, I hope this makes sense. I don't want to drag this one. We're already almost 37 minutes into this video. And so, yeah, Kendra people, they have damaged souls. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so, Kendra people, I am going to let that rest right there. If you like this video and or if it resonates with you, please just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Then click on that red subscribe button and subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. Thank you. Then click on that bell right next to that red subscribe button and so that you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. Something like this will came to people. Also, if you are interested in any of the services that I presently offer, if you are interested in purchasing anything from my merch store, some kingdom business apparel, if you are interested in sowing a seed into me and my ministry and supporting the channel, you can find all the information right down below in the description box. Also, check out the join membership. I'm sorry. <laughs> the you by YouTube membership by clicking on that join button right down below. And so, yeah, came the people. Also, just to let you all know, um, I'm coming. I just want you to know I'm coming on some things. I'm a little bit behind on getting some things in place that I've mentioned to many of you all before. It's because certain things got to be done. I had to reroute some stuff. Just put it like that. I had to reroute some things. Um, all God led. All Holy Spirit led. So I have to be obedient and do things His way as He leads me. And so yeah. Just to let you all know, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm still working on some things. So anyhow, kingdom people, we are, we are, we are. We are history makers. We are world changers. We are dream successors. We are wealth generators. We are manifestors. We are curse breakers. And we most definitely are transformers more than meets the eye. Yeah, kingdom people, we are, we are, we are. Kingdom people, thank you all so very much for being here with me, spending this time with me. You could be anywhere else, but you're here with me, and I appreciate you for that. Came to people, with that being said, much love, light, and peace, and many blessings to you all. Came to people, that is my time. You already know. Jesus, girl. Oh, I don't want to leave, y'all, but I do have to go right now. <laughs> now. <laughs> I don't know. That just scared to me like you guys. But I will be back to hold my kingdom people down. Y'all, I got to go. That's why I'm getting like this because I got to be somewhere in five minutes. 
but it's right up the street. So we Gucci King the people. King the people, that is my time. Jesus girl, she's out. Peace.